Hello, my name is Steve Dudley. I'm the co-director of Insight based here in Washington, D.C. On the other end of the line, we have Taylor Barnes, who was the recipient of Inter-American Press Association Award this last year. She's based down in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. She writes for the Miami Herald and the Christian Science Monitor. Taylor, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How's everything down there? It's going pretty well. People are pretty excited because, of course, this is Obama's first South American visit, and he's choosing Rio for Brazilian Rio for his first stops. What kind of, uh, of Brazil can, can Obama expect to find? Yeah, well, for Rio in particular, Rio's in a really unique time right now in that it's safe in a way that it really hasn't been in any sort of recent memory. Um, Obama in particular requested to visit a favela that has an UPEPE, and UPEPE is one of the new policing units that are about two years old that stations a very large concentration of police in certain favelas, in select favelas. And in many ways, it's made for the first time these favelas that used to be, even Brazilians were scared to go into them. City of God, Cantagalo, um, pretty soon Complexo de Limo, much safer, easy to walk through. I've gone to several of these foreigners walk through. Uh, it's a new sense of safety that hasn't existed before. Is that, is that a real sign of progress uh, on the part of of Rio, or do you think it's kind of a, a temporary thing? What's your sense being there and having visited some of these places? Yeah, I approach these with a lot of skepticism, thinking one of the main criticisms you'll hear people say, oh, this is maquillage, and this is makeup, it's simply putting police on the streets when the crime will continue. But I'm increasingly getting more confident in them, even though the first thing to note is that this whole program is very, very limited. So Rio has approximately a thousand favelas, Right now, they recently inaugurated the 16th UPP, which covers about 55 favelas. So that's 55 and 1,000. And their plan is to get it up, I've heard, to around 40 UPPs by the World Cup in 2014. So one, it's very limited. But it is impressive. And I go, I've been visited several of these communities. I ask residents, is this actually working? Are you happy with this? There's such a history of mistrust of the police, such a history of police abuse, of police, um, police corruption. And I find it's very hard to find critics. The residents in the communities that have open face are very happy about them, um, especially in the city of God where I've spent the past two days. From from afar, we get a sense that there is there is there is this, there is an urgent situation in a lot of different places in Latin America. Mm -hmm. Rio would be one of those places. Do you think that in a short visit, like the one Obama is going to do, he's going to get that sense? Will he? Will he feel that sense of urgency? And then on, on the other end, will he respond to that sense of urgency? Yeah. Um, I think what Obama's doing is pretty impressive. As in, if he goes to the city of God, which is reported, it hasn't been confirmed by the White House, it hasn't been confirmed by American reporters or by American sources, but it's been confirmed by the Rio governor, that's a really big sign saying that, hey, this new policing program it's a big, it's really the one of the biggest confirmations it could possibly get. It's saying this is actually safe enough for the most powerful man in the world to step into what only two, three, four years ago was what residents say was just full of young armed men at any hour of the day, still full of shootouts any time. So I think it gives a really early approval to this new policing model. Um, and so, yeah, and I think it gives a new attention to Rio. For so many people who think that only a certain select section of Rio is safe for foreigners to pass through, safe, for, uh, safe in any sense, it shows that even the American officials are saying it's beyond that. One last question. What, what can we expect to happen in Rio over the next six months to a year in terms of how they deal with the security situation there? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, one of the big things that is on the Rio agenda now is you probably remember this past November uh, was a very scary time here. And over a week, in the last week of November, there was over a thousand cases of arson when organized crime was acting out ostensibly against this policing model, ostensibly acting out against heavy policing presence. And uh, as a result of that, police. Rio decided to invade, retake a very emblematic favela called the Complexo de Limo. And after that, they established an army presence, which was unheard of, uh, for the army to occupy a territory within Brazil itself. So they created what they called a false supplies, which usually they have abroad, a peacekeeping force, like they have in Haiti, like they have 
uh, in Timor Leste. So it was very unheard of. The army is still stationed there. It's very bizarre to go to Complex de Lebanon nowadays because you see uh, armored vehicles and soldiers all, I mean, complete. Uh, completely geared for war, but just patrolling this one favela. So what's happening soon is the governor has said by middle, or toward the end of this year, they'll have trained enough new police recruits that they're going to establish new pepe in the complex de Lima, which was not on the agenda. Well, it was on the agenda, but not to be quite so soon. So if that actually works, if the army can leave then safely, and complex de Lima can be kept safe, that's a pretty big, pretty big accomplishment. Taylor, thanks for your time, and please stay safe. Thank you. Take care. This is Steve Dudley for Insight. We'll talk to you soon.